So everybody sees it? Good. So hello and welcome to the infrastructure functional group update for August 2017. Okay. So I'd like to start off by welcoming our new hires. And that's me. So I'm a new hire myself. My name is Seth Ishner. I'm the new director of infrastructure. We've also added John Jarvis as a senior production engineer and Gregory Stark as a database specialist. Uh, so to rehash, the goal of the infrastructure is to ensure that GitLab.com is ready for mission critical tasks. This includes the availability of GitLab.com at 99%, a 99% user request served under one second, and completing top 10 risk assessment actions. So accomplishments. Production. We are now indexing the site with Elasticsearch and the cluster supporting it has worked very well. We are able to create and destroy the cluster as required with a minimal amount of work. Thanks Terraform and Chef. Uh, we've isolated the container registry. This has been a big step in breaking up the monolith and it's moving us to a more cloud native setup. Uh, the sidekick fleet is also split up and we have now dedicated fleets for specific concerns and this allows scaling and tuning per fleet. Developers can now control feature flags themselves. Yay, feature flags. Uh, they no longer have to wait for somebody from the production team to set it up for them. Uh, it's all through chat ops. Uh, takeoff deployment has been finished and it's been used by the release managers. Uh, a lot of the issues around deployment have been resolved, but it's getting better. The latest refactoring was tested in staging today, so it's still come along getting better. And lastly, VPN access has been set up uh, for access to production fleet. And that's also going to show more security. Database. So databases, uh, the query timings on the project issues page has been reduced by 10 times. With the total response timing of these pages being cut in half, uh, loading time for the Explore Projects page is significantly reduced also. And with these changes in querying, uh, the event feeds are, in a best case, 66 times faster than they were before. Sidekick and, uniform and unicorn connections are now separate in PG Bouncer. Uh, this means that a spike in sidekick activity will no longer result in Unicorn not having any connections available. There's a new merge request template for database changes. Uh, this will make reviewing the database related changes much easier and faster. And in the same vein, uh, making things easier, the database team has uh, refactored their handbook and it's gotten a much needed update. Giddily. So, uh, all get clones and fetches are using Giddily now and have been doing so for over a week. Uh, this has greatly reduced, I'm sorry, greatly reduced NFS traffic. Uh, the Giddily Ruby sidecar is now running experimentally in 9.5. And with this, we can skip porting uh, Ruby Rugged to Go. And this allows us to focus purely on the endpoints. And we are well on track for meeting the Q3 OKR of 25 migrations. Security, uh, package signing is now active in 9.5. And there's a remote access now requires a VPN for production, so that's a big step. Uh, there's now a wider deployment of the intrusion detection system in the GitLab environment. And we've also have a GitLab static analysis gem is merged. And this adds some rules to uh, RubyCop to look for the use of calls that have known security issues. So we can flag them before we even get into production with them. We engage the external security audit from a and they found a critical vulnerability in Git. I'm sure we all saw the announcements, the alerts. Everybody I know in the industry has, so that's great. And we've also added protections against a, a denial of service in CI versus the uh, a very old, but very uh, interesting Ruby regex. So concerns and where we need help. So the NFS fleet stability is, is still an issue. Uh, we've run to a recent issue with Giddily consuming all the system resources. This luckily has a quick fix. Uh, if just putting Giddily process inside C group, that can limit how much of the host resource it can consume. However, NFS overall is still a single point of failure in the current setup. The good news is there has been a lot of work in circuit breakers, shout out to Bob, and Giddily to remove this. Uh, the size, uh, another issue is the size of storage we're encountering. Uh, outside of the repos, just the artifacts, it's very large, it's becoming unwieldy. Uh, this needs to move to object storage to make it horizontal scalable. And we also have a concern with iteration speed. Uh, when something's deployed, if there's issues or bugs that can take longer than anybody here wants to get it fixed and deployed. So to alleviate this, we're highly recommending feature flags. Uh, the Giddily team has shown these to great effect. They're able to turn on and off new features and when they ramp them up, because as we know, staging cannot give us the same level of traffic as production. They're able to ramp up 10%, 20% traffic until 
you know, they never find bugs, but in case they do, they can just turn it off rather than have redeploy work on it. Database concerns. And while still currently being worked on, we do not have a full failover system in place in production. And there's also an issue with the primary disks that cause IO throttling on the high load. However, both of these are being addressed in linked issues and hopefully will be resolved soon. The PG bouncer is still running in our temporary setup instead of being based on Omnibus. So that's an issue that needs to be resolved. And lastly, Influx database is incapable of handling 25 hours of data. It handles 12 fine, but it croaks on 25 around midnight. It just stops recording data for about 20 minutes. So uh, we have to put it in 12 hour increments and recalculate every 12 hours. So Gilly, resources. The major blocker right now to delivering Gilly faster is just the current engineer resources. The more engineering resources we can get, the more endpoints we can get through faster. And file server scaling. Uh, Gidley is handling more operations with every release, but until we're off of NFS, we're unable to scale horizontally. And this means that Git operations are being concentrated on the 12 file servers, and you know, those are the only ones we can use. Security. We're seeing uh, a definite increase in the CI abuse, the level of CI abuse we've seen. And the, 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 the large security issues we feel are not getting the priorities we need to get them moving forward. So, our plans. So, so, first thing is, you can't fix what you can't see. To that end, we're revamping the logging infrastructure. Uh, eventually, we want all logging to use it, ending the need for individuals to log into a machine to view any logs. They should have one centralized logging place. Uh, we're splitting up the Redis cluster, and what this is, it's initially just being split into a cache and other cluster, but this lets us dump the cache without affecting the operations of other parts of the site. And there's also work being done to make GitLab.com region and cloud redundant with Geo. Uh, this will allow us to fail over to other locations if the current one's experiencing issues, such as the low light of this past month was Azure Storage going offline for over seven hours. Uh, if we have something like Geo in place, we'll be able to fail over to a different region and mitigate a lot of that downtime. Uh, so, I'm just not here, but Greg's, Greg's with us now, so uh, the plan is to bring him up to speed, and that will reduce the, the load immensely on York and improve the throughput of the whole team. Uh, they're going to, and the database team will be working with the production team to ensure that the primary disks are up to snuff, and they're working on an automated failover system for the database in production. PG Bouncer will also be changed to be set up using Omnibus, and the temporary solution removed. And of course, work is always continuing on improving important controllers to make them faster. Italy, migration, migration, migration. You know, it's, that's their plan. I believe after this OKO, there's going to be 75 more endpoints to migrate. Uh, for security, we're going to there's auditing improvements. We can continue to audit, including investigations of incidents such as account lockouts, repository access, group membership changes, etc. And we're going to have big improvements in our vulnerability scanning infrastructure and an automated, thorough, dynamic web scanning for each release. So, and you know, we're always looking for more people. Please, people you know who fit these roles, we're looking for director of security, security specialist, security engineer, and production engineers. We're always looking out for good people. Please, anybody you know, point to the site. And uh, now see if there's uh, questions in the chat. I got to stop sharing my screen just to see the chat. Right? They never find bugs. Never. <laughs> uh, Said so uh, feature flags are not recommended if features might affect infrastructure, not for 99% of our features. Right? Um, I mean, that's. Uh, I would uh, recommend feature flags uh, be just because we never know how they're going to operate under load. Uh, a good example is Monday, the GPT signatures on those. It seems like a nice feature, but it start really spiking up as a feature flag because then you can just disable it rather than having to hot patch uh, systems. Um, it's a good way also to, to test the results uh, of features that people like and people use them. I've seen feature flags almost used as like an A-B testing. Uh, but yeah, from, from our point of view, we, we definitely, anything that touches the infrastructure, anything that could uh, harm the infrastructure, we, we really want to see feature flags used. Yeah, I, I think it's a trade-off. Look, if we 
using a feature flag means you're releasing it and then you have to like clean up the code after everything gets to 100%. So now suddenly every feature takes two releases and takes two merge requests, takes two reviews, you might forget, you might have old code still there, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, so it, it is a trade-off. So, so use them when there can be an impact to production, but for, for 99% or maybe 89% of our features, if you just change something in the front end, it's it's not very likely to have an impact. And from time to time, we might miss something, but it's it's a trade off of velocity mm-hmm. uh, versus stability. And uh, yeah. I think it's something like GPT keys. Like yeah, someone might think about the impact it does, or we might miss it, and that happens. But it's uh, it's it's not something. It's not like any new feature now needs a feature flag. That's not what what we're but I think we should be saying to uh, to all the backend developers. Okay, fair enough. Uh, infrastructure recommends them around stability issues, but yet yeah, it's a judgment call. Uh, sorry, how's on mute? Uh, do you think we should expose future flags for end users like an admin? But that's, uh, that's a product decision. I, I'm just recommending for us to use internally to stabilize the infrastructure. Yes. And what what I said for that. Can we, on that topic, Seth, um, I think we, uh, we sometimes have like, for example, a high load on the database and we don't have any way to say, look, um, I'll, when, when Twitter had stability problems, they had kind of a dark mode where like the basic things would work, but the things that really tax their infrastructure, like uh, complex searches or something else, those, those got disabled for a while. I think it would be really worthwhile if we, we have something like that in GitLab. So not for new features, but for like, these are the things we know to cause a lot of load and the production team is able to turn them off. So if, if, we're, if we're having a problem, we can like turn off non-vital services so that, so that at least like all the issues still load because people really need that. Yeah, that sounds good. I'm making, just making quick notes. Yeah, exactly, Brian, like disable mirror. So instead of like max mirror capacity, which we'll never get exactly right, but have a mode to say, look, we're, we're under load. This is, we shouldn't call it panic mode, but maybe mm-hmm. maybe dark mode or, or reduced mode. functionality <laughs> or something like that. But um, go into like a, a low load mode for, for good line. Yeah. Good. Yeah, don't, it's to prevent fail whales, not to present them. <laughs> Uh, is there any other questions? No? Nope. Okay, well, thank you everybody for your time. And uh, I'll see everybody on the team call in a couple of minutes. So uh, have a good weekend for, if you're in Europe, or have a good Friday if you're in the US or somewhere else. So take care, everybody. <laughs>